Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Co-op Rose. This time we have something a little bit different for you. We've actually had the chance to check out and play Link Banner of the Spark. You would have seen our impressions release yesterday. Um, it's a brand new hack and slash game that blends um, top down hack and slash combat with these roguelike missions. And then also a very interesting like Animal Crossing town building mechanic that we didn't expect, but we really liked. Uh, the game just launched into early access, so again, be sure to check out our impressions video to see if you want to get in there and enjoy it. But uh, we didn't just get to play the game, we actually got to sit down with the developers too. Yeah, so we got to sit down with uh, Max Spielberg and Tatiana Deshlova, the two co-founders of a new studio called FuzzyBot, um, which is developing Link Banner the Spark. And honestly, it was a really great conversation. You can obviously tell that they both love co-op games. So we got to ask them all about Link and what went into making a co-op game, what were some of their inspirations for the title. We learned a lot and it was a ton of fun. So without further ado, here's the interview. Max, Tatiana, welcome to the channel. Thanks so much for being here. Obviously so close to launch. Um, by the time we put this interview up, the game will have already launched. So like sort of a congratulations in one sense. Um, we want to start off just kind of help you introduce yourself to our audience just by hearing about your gaming history. What is your like sort of gaming origin, if you will? We just kind of gave you ours a minute ago. Maybe some of the games that you played early on or like helped solidify this hobby into like an actual career. Right. Um, I don't touch it. Do you want me to start? Or do you want to go for early gaming stuff? Uh, well, I started uh, gaming. My mom's a programmer, so I started gaming on floppy disks just to be entertained. But the game that made me want to become a game developer was Final Fantasy VII. Cool. I think I just like disappeared and might have nearly flunked fifth grade <laughs> 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 or something like that. Um, but yeah, that where I was felt really pulled into the world and the characters and um and i was like this is great what if i can do what my mom does but cooler <laughs> yeah, um yeah so yeah that was that was the definitive game for me and and when i was uh before i got into college i played mostly japanese rpgs and then i got into world of warcraft and, and more multiplayer type stuff that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, that's great. Um, you were playing, you beat Rebirth earlier this year, right, Andrew? Yeah. Yes, I played both the re remake and Rebirth. I think that probably a lot of people would point to Final Fantasy VII as sort of like gaming origin. Um, that's, a, that's a good answer. Good answer. Yeah, what about you, Max? For myself, um, so I was a Nintendo kid. Uh, I think my dad brought home an NES when I was like two or something. I have like very early vivid memories of playing Mario. Uh, and that was it. I was I was locked in. Um, and then I think the moment uh, game dev became like something that I started seriously thinking about was um, in the PS1 era. So Medal of Honor on PlayStation 1 was in development. And I was lucky enough to uh, go to that studio, uh, the, uh, the DreamWorks Interactive Studio, and, and tour around and meet a bunch of the devs. Um, and they kind of gave me the super high level of what it looks like to make a game. Um, and it was... That was it. I was like, okay, I got to come hang out here more, uh, learn from you guys. I uh, did some like light interning and, and QA back in those days. Um, and from that point on, I was in. Um, in terms of like early games that I remember getting in like trouble. Um, I think it was when my parents like thought I was <laughs> had a problem with like I think it was Yoshi's Island um, Ooh, on Super okay. Nintendo, That's and cool. I would like come home from school. Do say nothing to anybody and just start grinding that game. My parents are like, you have to come eat dinner. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to stay here for another <laughs> eight hours. And I think that's when they're like, okay, you need to like start doing things outside. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. I'll try to find a balance. Um, but yeah, for me, it's been a lot of a lot of Nintendo inspirations uh, growing up with with those types of games. Yeah, that that's awesome. Um, I love that you mentioned Medal of Honor. That's actually um, one of the first games that I actually played with my dad. Um, he he loved Medal of Honor, and it was one of those where it's like I don't know, maybe sometimes when like your dad sort of broaches or introduces you to something, you're kind of like, oh, is it like old or like I don't know? And I was, <laughs> I was like totally hooked. I really loved it. Um, so so that's really cool. Um, 
But um, yeah, we did a little bit of our, our homework on you guys. Really just um, check the email that uh, Nikki sent us. <laughs> but it seems that you <laughs> both came from, from DICE, right? Um, which uh, for our viewers, DICE is a, a pretty big studio behind Battlefield, Star Wars Battlefront, and a bunch of other really great games. Um, so as co-founders of FuzzyBot, like what brought you to the point of um, starting up your own game studio? I'm curious like what that sort of um, led you to that position decision well so we were working together since like 2016 on battlefield and then we got pulled into a couple of incubation projects as well so max and i had a chance along with a, a few people in the office with max to work together both on existing things and then also on trying to build something new and I think we, as our our small group within a bigger group, realized that that's really something we wanted to do, and we wanted to do that together. And then I think uh, one of the projects we were on got canceled halfway through, like pre-production, and it was during COVID, and we're kind of living next to each other, so we got like sad drinking on the front lawn <laughs> and decided to start a game studio Naturally, it started off as just like story. we should just do our own thing yeah and then like a few days later max is like well should we <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's awesome what yeah. a way to go that's great. mistakes were made and look at where we are now um yeah and it was cool like the that incubation team like the the early group i think there was around like only eight of us or something like that and I think almost all those people, the, uh, the majority at least, um, joined us at Fuzzy Bob right at the beginning. Um, and then we built out the rest of the studio uh, through um, re references and, and some searching and found some really amazing people um, that we're super proud to have at Fuzzy Bob working alongside with that uh, are just awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's That's really cool. Yeah, I'm sure part of it is like you get to build your own team now, and I'm sure that, that that like totally changes the dynamic of the whole process. I would I would think. Yeah, that was. Oh, sorry. Good. Oh uh, no, yeah, I think it was the best part of building the team is that we just showed the game because when you're in a big company, people are like, "What are we doing?" Like, yeah, right. Tell you. <laughs> like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> so surprise uh, day one. <laughs> yeah. So so we were able to. I think that was part of the reason we ended up with a really cool dedicated team is we're like hey we're not ea we're not like a big studio we can't pay that well uh but here's a game if you want to like do an indie and so a lot of uh, people that joined us are either super talented new to the industry just really hungry excited to be part of a smaller team <clears throat> or it's people that are like i worked on enough franchises i want to work on this game and you guys are okay and tolerable. So let's do yeah. this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's something about getting to work on your own IP that's like a, just a totally different experience. That's, yeah. that's like, super cool. People have more of like a vested, I feel like they have a vested interest in it too, right? Like they're invested in in the game considering like you're sort of like, yeah, like come along and help us build this thing. Um, and you're kind of getting to, yeah, like you're kind of having a, more of a say. I think it's really interesting. Yeah, I think one of the things early on we wanted to promote, at least culturally within Fuzzy Bot, is, you know, there's no, um, everyone, like, best idea wins, essentially. So everybody that joined was like, oh, what if we could do this? And what about that? You know, all these ideas go through a vetting process, but it's not just me as the creative director, you know, no, yes, you know, my way is the, or the highway. Uh, a lot of the best features of uh, Linked um, have come from, uh, basically almost everybody on the team has had something uh, that has a major impact on the game. And a lot of those people, it's ideas that are outside their field, engineers, artists do, uh, taking on design work, animators, etc. So uh, it really feels like a, a cohesive kind of amalgamation of like all of the FuzzyBot team's ideas into this one product. Mm -hmm. And of course, with, um, uh, with refinements along the way, it's not just anything goes, but we like to hear everybody's uh, inner thoughts because everybody here plays games, has played games for years, has stuff that they've always wanted to see or great ideas that have been waiting in the wings. So we're like, yeah, of course, let's talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Gabe and I have that too. Where we're, we've played so many games together at this point that obviously we, we've kind of started to build up our own like 
backlog in our head of like features that we like a lot and we always joke about one day we'll make our own game but that is years in the future um <laughs> yeah yeah totally when we were when we were playing link the other day we were trying to figure out when it was announced and at first we thought it was summer games fest and we're like man that is such a quick turnaround and then we remembered no it wasn't it was announced at gamescom so it's only a two-month period between being announced and now right so what what has that period been like of like here's our game world and it's coming on two months that's just that's a little bit mind-blowing for us at least yeah totally so i think we're we were looking at early access as a way to actually iterate on our genre mishmash um throughout development like we knew we were up for a challenge like we built mm -hmm. a game that we have a thesis around which is that when you play co-op like it's fun to do combats but sometimes you just want to like chill hang you know somebody's getting coffee yeah uh yeah. and so we, we like that. yeah <laughs> and so like a lot of the town and the animal crossing mechanic is for that hangout spot just like do things together in between combat runs so but it was really hard for us to describe it to folks it actually mm -hmm. was difficult for us to even pitch the game sometimes because they're like just built one of these games um mm. and we were very particular of like it like a lot of people are building more cozy games a lot of people are building more rogues we want to do something new and fresh and yeah. really take on a challenge uh so one of the things that we did with a really short announce is just to get the game into people's hands as quickly as possible and basically build from there um because I would say that coming from triple a the one thing that we really appreciate just because we've seen over <laughs> and over again how hard it is is to get a new game up like a new ip any kind of like true innovation it's actually really really tricky it's much easier to do another franchise iteration because you have a core fan base and you can build on top of that but it's hard to do that before you have some kind of initial build thesis out like it's really hard to do very early yeah um and so a lot of like part of the reason it's like let's announce and let's get the game out and until 1.0 we'll really refine the mix and the flow um and take it from what we feel is a really solid game to like a really fun great game so that's that's part of the the strategy that we had we tried a little bit of like <laughs> build with players and we got really good feedback but immediately we felt like we couldn't sustainably just put out things like a lot of the feedback required months and months of development in between mm -hmm. and so now now we're at a place where we can iterate a much quicker turnaround of, of feedback to patch to new feature yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah um yeah i went back and watched the the trailer recently and then um i was i actually watched um max and uh another team member of yours eric was on min max right you guys did a, a min max mm -hmm. interview which i love those folks um and uh, you you were talking about going on stage um and i was like oh wow yeah i forgot about that that you two were on stage with jeff Geely and everything um yeah so I, i'm just sort of i think that's like really amazing actually um i'm like curious about like what was that feeling of like you know stepping on stage and like unveiling your game in front of people and you know also like you know i'm a creative myself obviously we work on the channel um i actually outside of the channel um i'm a graphic designer that's sort of my day job I, i'm in branding um so i know somewhat what it feels like to kind of uh present something to either the, the world and like launch a project and such like that um so i'm kind of curious uh maybe what was the feeling like in the weeks and days before GamesCon, knowing you're about to put on your game on the map in front of like thousands of people? It's just like kind of a crazy scope for me to think about. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, so first off, I'll say Tatiana and I got into uh, starting our own studio to avoid being on camera. <laughs> that was the one thing we're like, we're never going to do this. Like, we yeah. don't, you don't need to be on stage for any of this. Um, my whole career is actually just avoiding that moment. Um, so it came. Um, <laughs> I think... Uh, <laughs> It was super exciting leading up to it and it was great for the team too like uh you know we put together this trailer we worked really hard on um and uh being able to be showcased along you know uh, amazing titles that uh, uh that Rana O'Neill was was awesome um and 
Jeff was great in terms of like he got to we sat with him beforehand I think like a week or two beforehand and actually he got to play through the game and he was like legitimately excited and he's like yeah like that felt really awesome like feeling like it wasn't just a, a PR puff piece it was like somebody believes in this and like wants to show off the world alongside us yeah and that's awesome then it was preparing for <laughs> actually standing up there and saying words on a microphone <laughs> um so like let's just get through this <laughs> as fast as possible we get to that trailer moment um but I think looking back you know uh we're super super thankful that uh jeff gave us the opportunity and uh you know now i'm looking back i'm like you know what okay bucket list like i planned on never doing that glad i did it once maybe i'll never do that have to do that again i don't know um but i don't know what were your thoughts tatiana we were so nervous like mm -hmm. we i would say I that imagine. yeah there's a few people on our team that are more naturals at this and so the i think the 24 hours before we were just we had two minutes to talk and i think we repeated it a hundred times just walking around cologne <laughs> and at some point i'm like okay bail let's just drink some kolsch but it, it, it was very nerve-wracking i really appreciate the people that do that professionally uh, uh like watching some of the xbox exec go up and just like be able to move around we were just happy we didn't cannonball each other off the stage or like take down Jeff oh, we, we the went, there's <laughs> so many scenarios of what could go wrong dropping mics falling <laughs> to each other's lines yeah uh, so at least we're prepared for that part of it yeah but yeah. It, it was it was cool um I would like for any indie devs I think the best part of something like that is the feature you get from Steam I think that mm. more than anything more than any PR coverage more than the eyeballs who watched it uh, just getting featured on the, on the Steam page. I think the world of indie dev is basically figuring out how to use Steam to your favor, and, and that was a huge bump for us initially. So that's awesome. it was, yeah, it was a, a great connective connective piece. Yeah, that's yeah. very cool. Jeff, Jeff makes it seem so natural up there. He just he, <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy. It's so easy for him, but he's also been doing it for years, and he's done. I don't know how many shows at this point. I'm sure he's lost count, but yeah, I, I can imagine that my nerves going into that would just be like, Duh, don't oh, yeah. drop the mic, shaky hands and all that. So just backstage, like pumping us up right before. And you guys gonna be great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Jeff, you've done this before. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, that's cool. Especially getting to hear that you saying like, yeah, that's that that that's really cool to hear that insight about Jeff. You know, there's like Jeff the myth and Jeff like the actual guy that is supporting indie devs and like cares enough to to put you guys as a huge feature on that stage. That's that's awesome to hear. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So we you know we mentioned we've already got to play the game. Um, at this point, when this video is out, our impressions will be out and our audience will see that we're feeling really good about it. We've enjoyed our time with it for sure. Um, so we want to get into like the co-op aspects of the game. But overall, what about what about co like what what was the sort of driving force behind making a co-op game yeah like making a co-op game specifically as like your sort of debut title mm -hmm. yeah um so we have some really strong engineers uh with really strong backgrounds and in, in online support uh the previous games you know battlefield is uh, not a co-op game but it's definitely a pvp game um i've worked on a couple co-op games in the past um, but for this specifically um I guess we got to go back to like the inception of the game. Um, mm -hmm. So the the early early idea, I think we were talking about. Okay, what do we make? We're starting a studio. What do we really? What's the, what's the dream game? And what's feasible with the kind of uh, allotted uh, money and time and people that we think we're going to have? Um, and at that time, I think uh, it was the like peak COVID. So uh, I think everybody was playing Animal Crossing. Um, big fan of that game. I played that game solo, um, even though there's there. There's tons of co-op uh, opportunities in there um but for me it was like okay this is a really fun experience that you can go day to day with there's a lot of uh kind of person personalization that you can do in this town i was doing all that personalization for myself and i was like i want to be able to show this off um but i also wish there was something extra i could do when the game kind of you know you run out of chores uh, day to day right and they're like hey come back tomorrow and, and that's their loop and yeah it's super unique to them um and so my first thought was like, well, I want to continue playing this game. What else could you possibly do in a similar type of genre, a cozy game outside um, of the the day to day chores in the town? And so I was like, okay, as an action player and a, and a game dev that's mostly been in action this career, I was like, let's. What if you go fight stuff, bring back you know <laughs> parts? Big fan. Of, you guys mentioned Monster Hunter. I'm a big fan of like that loop of you got your yes, home base yeah, and you're yeah. 
carve enough monster legs to, like turn into armor and i was like okay like had a lot of inspiration from that um but all these things kind of always rolled into like customization of your space of your character of your weapons and your build um and the most fun part for me is always like like sharing comparison with other players mm -hmm. and so oh, it was kind of a natural thing to like hey like let's let's bring in you know uh your best friends rando support uh play these different roles you know we wanted we knew early on we wanted to have like a wide variety of play styles to kind of play off of each other um and um you know different abilities and whatnot so um how do you create like the the most uh uh what kind of builds between the three or two whoever play is currently playing uh can create the best um dynamic and then putting that in a kind of roguelite inspired setting where every time the run is a little bit different allows you to kind of mix and match what your you know your your build so you're always trying out new things as well as your friends so anyway at the end of the day i think for us it, became, it came down to that like collection uh and showcasing of your skill of your world of your character was like ripe for co-op mm. um and so we had the means to build uh that type of a game and i think we had co-op running in what like the first three months wow. Talk to you, like really fast mm. had it going that's cool um and someday we'll show we're gonna think do a montage of like the prototype of the game because it, it looks nothing like what you're, you guys have played yeah uh, that's awesome but uh yeah a lot of that stuff still made it into the game which is super cool that's very cool yeah and it's more fun like during covid to work on a co-op game than it is on a single player game we always got to, like that's the way it was also for us to hang out yeah, uh, yeah while we were a small team and just uh and do things and i think it was we had worked on a few pvp games mm. and we really liked multiplayer but there's a lot of things that are really hard to do in pvp like melee mm -hmm. combat or um or like really one of the things that we were working on that we brought over is just using the environment a lot. That's such a yes. big pedigree of Battlefield. So we're like, this would be a lot more fun if we didn't have to like deal with the other party, yes. <laughs> like where we could just deal with AI and have a lot more predictability. So that was also uh, a bit of a, of a, we've done this, we like this, how can we, how can we bring it to, to, to life, so to say. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the environment thing because I, I think that's really cool. Um, I had this joke when we kept playing. Um, I always like grabbing the uh, these sort of like saw blades that, that are like thrown about and I mostly use the ring blades. So mm -hmm. it was just funny because I'd like throw a saw blade, but then also throw my ring blade. I was just <laughs> always like, and I, they kind of look like shurikens or like shuriken-esque. And I was just always like, so that was my, I mean, my joke, just throwing shurikens out a lot, uh, which is really fun. I love that environment stuff. Yeah. I actually think that's how the ring blade came into existence. That was like one of the last weapons we designed. And so we had a bunch of the throwable saw blades already out there. And we're like, okay, well, like, what if we could kind of dig into that? We we're looking for something ranged that wasn't just another gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. That's very the, cool. The, yeah. Um, so, you know, we've kind of iterated a lot on how we talk about co-op games in the channel um, over the years. But um, mostly specifically the structure of like our, our reviews and our videos um but something that's actually been um there from the start is this section that we call ease of play um and this is usually like the first section in our review and it's basically where we talk about like how easy it is to play a co-op game with other people things like share progression invite menus like player agency etc um and that was like one of the first things that really stuck out to us was linked so we want to uh, make sure we give you uh your flowers for that in terms of just like um inviting each other was like super easy um there's a lot of shared progression that was like really crazy actually like um you know we do kind of like our due diligence so we would kind of go back and do a mission and then come back to town and i'd be like oh let me go back to my town and see like if i got that and i'm like oh sick i do that's amazing um and then even there's like that specific call out andrew what was it it was like um if you like repeat you you don't have to repeat a mission right if you've done it with someone else yeah we we th this is a, a feature that is rarely implemented but every time it is we're like thank you this is such an important feature for co-op games where if gabe joins my uh town and i'm further along in the campaign he can complete missions with me that are further along than he actually is then when he goes back to his town when he gets to those missions on his own later he can just skip them love that that is such a great feature yeah i think that's really i neat. have to give 
full credit to that feature to our gameplay designer, uh, Sam Cushell, who's actually standing right behind me. That was all his idea. We were trying to figure that one out uh, for a while, actually, because um, there were early moments when we, before we had all the UI stood up and everything, where we're like, okay, wait, we did this run. Did you earn the thing or did I earn it? Is this your yeah. town? Like, where are we? <laughs> Who gets what? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then we kind of started to figure that part out, and then it quickly became apparent. We're like, "Oh, I did this run with you, but like, do I really have to, you know, go do that again? Like, why are we making mm -hmm. players to replay content that, you know, they've really already earned these unlocks, even though if they they weren't at the right point in the storyline?" Yeah. Um, and so Sam had that great idea to like, "Well, why don't you just let you skip it, and we'll give you all the rewards, and you can just keep going. Don't slow the player down." Yeah. No, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, you kind of answered um, the question I had here, which is that like, yeah, like how do you go about like nailing that sort of like co-op player experience? experience um yeah i'd be curious to think like what, what were those sort of conversations with um your sort of game design team and like it seems i mean it's really cool to hear that like the co-op aspect of it was there like three months in and it, it very much seems like a game that is built from the ground up um to support co-op versus like you know there's so many games that um maybe it feels like a tagged on sort of thing or maybe something that comes later um and you know again for us it's like a huge deal so yeah, I mean, honestly, it's it's playtesting the game daily ourselves is where we find the the problem areas, um, where you know there's you know I don't know ten of us playing the game, and as soon as like we finish and we start hearing the chatter within ourselves, like you know that point I mentioned before, there's a confusion point somebody might mention, like I don't know where I am in this you know. Uh, in this set of missions and then someone else chimes in like yeah me neither and they're like okay this is like flagged is now an issue like let's break it down mm. um and then we'll go in and okay like kind of map out on whiteboards or in a, or in mirror we use mirror a lot which is like a basically a digital whiteboard like yeah we use here's mirror the track <laughs> yeah here's the tracks that could potentially happen single player super easy it's just a straight line and then okay now let's add another player into that experience and see where it kind of okay this player's now finished this that player's ahead it kind of looks like the back to the future like <laughs> other timeline you know yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we're working backwards from there into like okay well how can we make this like the like how can we make this flow as seamless as possible and kind of hide all these kind of awkward moments where nobody knows what's going on here's some ui you know uh ideas that we can put in um here's some systemic concepts like the skip button we can start adding into that um and that kind of grows over time um as we bring in other teams the ux team did a phenomenal job of kind of coming in and, and realizing and showcasing to players um, all that key information that for a long time for us was like just stuff that worked but was hidden behind the scenes um and so you know there was a balance there figuring out how much we wanted to service to players you don't want to do too much and over overburden them with you know widgets on screen so um, i think they did a, a great job kind of giving you the right information with your current you know uh, primary path and your current secondary um and with a story log you can then use to follow etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's it's to make a sh long story short, um, we found issues ourselves that we didn't like, and then we kind of broke them all down and, and piece by piece filled in the blanks. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. And I would say one of the things we've done almost every year since we started is have a bigger player play test. There was one where we brought in 500 people, and that was the biggest piece of feedback that we got that really kicked everything into gear and really clarified how important something like that will be. I think we built a lot of infrastructure and only had like 5 to 10% play. And then when we dug into it, that was the biggest source of feedback. So we're like, yeah, if we actually want this to succeed, we need to support this. That's yeah. awesome. That's cool. I love to hear that you that the play test you were so much of it was like play testing the co-op specific parts of it because it feels like some games we play where it, it is clearly tacked on. It's like, well, we're doing the play test, but it's too late. <laughs> we're, we're reviewing the game right now. So, so you guys the, got yeah, to have the ball there. It's funny that we actually had to like uh, put in single player play tests at one point because we're like, all we're doing is testing co-op. Like, <laughs> what does a single player look like? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, just, like let's yeah. jump in. So Absolutely. that was like. We had to do like what do we have designated like Thursday single player days and and then we have some people on the team who just prefer to play single player and the you know mm -hmm. other people want to group up so cool yeah we we can't understand that but oh uh, yeah I'm sure that there's some people out there that want to play single player <laughs> um, you kind of mentioned earlier how you got to the point of creating that like shuriken weapon I think that linked combat like really clicked for us when we realized like whoa there's a there's like quite the weapon roster here. Um, and they're really creative, like the hoverboard, the guitar. I like the um, I like the boxing gloves that reminded me of like Nintendo. Did you guys ever play 
Nintendo had this game called Arms back when the Switch launched. Yes. And I, like never got to the point where it was like this thing, and we were joking like this is the Arms game that we wanted all this time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so what is what kind of goes into like especially with a hack and slash game where like the weapons are so important? What goes into like making those unique weapons, and also like how do you get them to play together so well? Yeah. Um, so that was a learning. I think we did our first four weapons, which was the order of events was sword, the bashers, the heavy weapons, um, the claws, just so we had something that was kind of like normal speed, normal damage, slow and, and high damage, and fast and low damage. We went to do that trinity. Um, and then the spear, I think, was after that. And we did those four, and we're like, okay, these are kind of like table stakes for similar games. Um, but we knew we needed to differentiate in a way beyond uh, just adding the, the the wire hook in there, which was something we always thought about. How did the, each of those four standard weapons play interestingly with the hook? Mm -hmm. um, but at that point, we felt like we had enough and we'd seen a lot of other kind of basic weapons in other games. And we're like, we're making this fun, like, uh, you know, very cartoony world where we can kind of throw the rules of reality out the window. Like, let's just come up with some weird stuff and see if there's, if there's something there. So I think... Mm -hmm. um, if I remember correctly, the the fists were after that, and immediately we were like, throwing punches is fun, but like now, like let's try something different. And I think the original idea was that the mechanically the weapon would have like a toggle that you could have them uh, as like ball and chain maces or on your fists as uh, you know big punching gloves. Um, and that's where I think the spark hit for us. And we're like, okay, after that one, how can we go even weirder than that? And will that still be fun? We had for a while a an idea for um a shield like a big like riot shield mm. um and we just couldn't get it to work like we were like okay this is all about blocking and pairing um and it just wasn't that fun um but looking at the shape of the shield i think one day we were just like well what if we just flip that sideways and what if you could ride it That's so, and sick. so <laughs> yeah andy our um Love our animation that. director who also does a lot of the gameplay features for the weapons um did a prototype and i want to say like a day like it was over the weekend i think some monday he's like dude check this out <laughs> and he's just riding around on the on the shield that we'd had before uh running into enemies and flipping them over so i was like okay that's it like boom this is hitting all the notes that uh we wanted to from like our early kind of reference games of like uh old school beat em up so i'm thinking like turtles in time where you could mm -hmm. in those sections you ride in the hoverboards yes, i'm like oh this yes, is like yes. bringing me back to that but like adding a bunch of stuff with like kick flips and you know tony hawk moves so totally mm -hmm. and after that we're like okay the floodgates are now open let's get let's get weirder and that's where the guitar came into play so we have yes um our audio team was thrilled for that one they're yeah. like hell yeah <laughs> we get to get musical instruments involved um and so each of the weapons kind of uh, from then on we knew we wanted to make feel very unique um, and also have that kind of wow factor and we knew not every weapon was going to be for everyone but we wanted to move away from the bread and butter uh, forever so for even like beyond uh, the early access launch when we're looking for uh, potentially doing new weapons for 1.0 the idea board is already chock full of some really weird ones but some really cool uh, seeds that we're going to start to kind of play around with but we found that like, as you guys have pointed out and as our, our player base has already pointed out the the kind of wackier and uh but more but functional the better yeah and so that's the mm -hmm. key for us making sure that <laughs> it's not just silliness um it, ha it has a really cool gameplay hook uh that feels mm -hmm. good in combat that's awesome yeah I, um that was it's it was really funny because we you know the second we um we got access to playing all the to trying out all the different weapons. I think we spent like close to an hour just in that little like boxing ring, just being like, wait, I'm going to go back and try this. I'm going to go back and try this, you know, and we're, we're kind of fighting over like, oh, wait, no, but I want to be the guy who uses the ring blades and such. But I mean, it's <laughs> one thing that's really funny, though, is that um, I think you really you guys really nailed the look of the weapons in that like even the guitar or the the battle board i think is, is what it's called um like at first glance i wasn't totally sure what it was and then you kind of have that really cool like player discovery of like oh shoot this is literally a hoverboard this is so sick i was like this is a guitar that's really cool um i think that brings me to um just like the general tone of the game and, and the sort of like 
upbeat and like um, sort of cartoony vibe of everything. I'm like curious, like how did you land into this sort of like really bright, colorful, uh, stylized um, look for the game and maybe what the sort of like story behind um, the bots and the sort of uh, optimistic sort of uh, apocalypse angle of everything. Um, would love to hear more about that. Yeah, so early on, we knew we wanted to go stylized. Um, I think from like day one, we're like, we've done a lot of, I think our entire team, or the early team, like the five of us, we've done a lot of very realistic games, Battlefield, Assassin's Creed, Forza, uh, Need for Speed. We've, we've seen and experienced a lot of that. Um, and none of us are artists. So we didn't have any like uh, skill base to, for it to matter too much in terms of the small team at the beginning. Um, and I think all of us were excited. Hey new team new studio it's like let's use this opportunity to try something totally different than what we're used to um and so you know looking at a lot of other uh games in the space of like nintendo and things like that that you know i think inspired a lot of us to get into game dev at the beginning like i mentioned earlier um that was kind of our our moment to to jump into that so um our first hire in the art department was eric kozlowski who is our art director um me and, me and him early on, on we've identified, identified this as a kind of challenge of, of narratively, we're talking about this world, world that, that, like you said, is an apocalypse. apocalypse. Mankind has essentially disappeared and robots have taken over. It's like, okay, you immediately start thinking of Terminator. Um, but how, how can we take a different look at that um, and think of these kind of, uh, this apocalypse in a more Saturday morning cartoon light? Um, mm. So a lot of it started with, you know, thinking about cartoons that we were all fans of back in the day, uh, alongside bringing in a little bit of um, uh, the kind of cozy and uh, kind of naturistic elements of like Miyazaki films, kind of marrying mm. those two together. Um, so Eric immediately was like, had some fantastic ideas in terms of bringing this sense of vibrancy and color into the world. There's so many action games that um, are very dark and gritty and I am a huge fan and, and buy all of those myself, but um, we found that there weren't too many games in our kind of category that that lent themselves to that lighter aesthetic. And from then on, I think we just had fun with it. We're like, yeah, these robots are steel characters, but what if they moved and bent and squashed and stretched very organically to mm -hmm. give them a, that much more um, um, personality? But also, like, when you're hitting enemies and even in town, if you, like, pick up a character and throw them into a wall, you can just see them like splat into like a 2d shape and then peel back off the wall there's there's just something very like fun and enjoyable about that kind of visual uh uh, uh concept throughout the experience both in the, the cozy sections of the game but also in the, the combat spaces and so from then we we went off and kind of had a line in terms of tonally we knew the town experience was going to be more on the cozy side but we didn't want to go too cozy or too animal crossing and, and make it feel like it was too childish we wanted to have that action beat really hit um so we knew the the enemies the combats um that was our opportunity to kind of uh edge things up a bit and you know you're fighting guys with giant blades for arms and machine guns on their back um, but they still have that kind of cartoon flavor to them so that meshes mm -hmm. with the other side of the game so that was our goal at least uh early on was to also make sure that not only we have these two kind of this dichotomy of, of cool versus cute um but it felt like it was in the same universe yeah and then just like from previous experiences part of the thing is <clears throat> when you go realistic you're really limited to what you can do and have fun with and so we kind of the to have this idea of environmental impact and this much variety of weapons and for everything to make sense uh it made more sense to to do it in a stylized world uh and also i think the part of the for the designers is making enemies look like what they're going to do to you. Yeah. So having as much tie between the visual language <laughs> and communication as you could. I think those are some of the even inspirations from Nintendo lover days of, you know, positive, feels good to be there, but a lot of it just serves the design factors, which is you, you understand without even a lot of tutorialization what could be done. Yeah, our enemy names like that speaking to that like early on it's just like internal dev names was just very basic you know this is what the, it looks like so you kind of know what it's gonna do so blade bot 
<laughs> dog bot. And we're like, oh, they're, not, they're, they're not super inspired, but then we were thinking about like, okay, well, what if like robotic, you know, a hive minded robot was making these things? That's all. That's probably what they would be called because it's yeah. very, you know, straightforward and, and industrial. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. And then with the bosses, uh, we were like, here's where you can inject some more personality. These guy characters might be a little bit more autonomous and not within this hive network. So that's where we had more fun with like bringing up uh, uh, more visual personality in those characters. Although I think all of our cast has has pretty awesome personality yeah yeah i really liked um how you put it on stage tatiana where you said uh you you beat the evil robot then you save the cute ones i think that's a, <laughs> a nice little nice little tagline and um yeah it's funny you guys bring up uh you know i think there is kind of like a fun humor to the game um one thing that i I tend to, whenever we play games together, I tend to be a bit of a troll. Um, so uh, <laughs> we were playing in we were playing in Andrew's Island or Andrew's um, town, and I realized that you can pick up the residents or, or the merchants too. And so obviously there's a body of water nearby. I was gonna try to throw them into the water, <laughs> and so I just kept doing that. And you couldn't like talk to the merchant yet because I was just being a troll. Which, yeah, I had to get it out of my system at least. So, but that was fun. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this, if this is a bug report as much as it was just comically perfect. I was in the middle of a conversation with a bot, and Gabe grabbed him and threw him into the river, and I was still having the conversation <laughs> with the bot. It was like the funniest moment. I, I absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I love that part. I, of it. I, I really like the environmental design that you you mentioned too. I thought that was like absolutely nailed. Loved it all. So awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, some of those like buggy moments kind of are things that in certain cases almost turned into features or like, mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, it was early on where you could like, uh, we had a thing in from combat and you were able to like charge into an enemy and knock them over. And then suddenly all the villagers in town, the residents, we, <laughs> we kept that so you can like bowl characters over as you're sprinting. And that's, a, that's one that's still within the team. Some people like it, some people don't, but we always look for things like okay can this can this bug bring anything to the game i think the other one was picking up the characters like you're saying like initially there was no design for that it just kind of worked out of the box and they're like okay now we can play catch with the robots in town we got to keep this yeah, um yeah when gabe first did it i was like i don't think that they maybe intended that but then later I did a quest for one of my islanders where they were like, please throw me in the water. <laughs> yeah, like, this is okay, a unique no, matter. <laughs> yeah, they, they like that. It's all good. Um, okay, cool. So kind of as we close out, you, you mentioned earlier about playing Animal Crossing New Horizons during the pandemic. I feel like for a lot of people, that was like a real like cornerstone memory of co-op gaming. I know it was for, for Gabe and I. We played that game during the pandemic and it helped us get through it. Um, do you guys have any other like sort of favorite co-op gaming memories? I know we talked about earlier um, your sort of gaming origin story, but do you have any of those moments where you were playing with friends that was like, that's what you look back on? You know what I mean? I'm trying to think of things from the past. Recently, I, uh, and this is pretty recent, um, Helldivers 2 was just like uh, every night I was oh, yeah. on that with a group of friends yes. and had an amazing time with that game. Loved it. I think in the past, um, what if I played it? Do you have anyone talking? I gotta think for a minute. So it's not a, my favorite co-op moments are all from World of Warcraft, and it's part of the reason mm -hmm. why I really believed in this game, which mix mashes both combat and other stuff. Mostly because the the best part isn't optimizing all your runs and then getting yelled at when you don't do that, but it's just like all that moment when you're preparing and talking about how many times you've done it and like. You know trying to complete some side quests while you wait for the group like that's where i guess friendships are are made for me yes. in that game yeah, totally and after i stopped playing world of warcraft i played <clears throat> destiny 2 for a bit but i almost felt like it didn't have enough of the mix of the of the mess around it, it was very combat heavy all the time and so again that's uh that my favorite parts is when you're like hanging out and, and gaming mm -hmm. is just something that you do so I wouldn't be a good guild leader. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I got mine. I'm going to date myself with this, but it's a childhood memory um, of playing. I don't know if you guys remember Bubble Bobble, mm -hmm. but um, it was an old arcade game where you're a little dinosaur and you blow bubbles out your mouth and you have to like basically put trap enemies in a bubble and then pop the bubble to destroy them. And then oh, you move through like... Yes. I think there's like a hundred levels and me and my dad played that and our goal was to get to level 100 
and I remember for like weeks we were at it and we got to the 99 and I think we gave up at one point but that was like I think my earliest memory of like oh you can play these games not just against you know the computer but with other people mm -hmm. um, and you know that from there you know a ton of co-op uh, games fell into my lap that I fell in love with even um, what am I thinking of oh man there's so many now they like it's crowding my brain i tried world of warcraft i don't think i fell in love with the like tatiana did i was i was the guy who was like level 20 while my friends were all level 60 so i just walked behind them they're like don't attack anything just take the loot and i was like this isn't super fun for me but i get it like if you're all kind of at the same page uh the same like uh, level which is something i think we brought into our game too we we're like okay uh let's make sure that players of any kind of length that they're playing the game can still jump in and play together um I don't feel like they're getting outclassed by their buddies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very cool. That's very cool. I love that. Um, well, Max, I have to ask because you've mentioned your dad a couple times, um, and it seems like your last name lines up with Steven Spielberg's last name. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm curious. That has your dad played? Um, uh, has your dad played Linked? Um, I'm wondering what he thought about his stuff. He so he did he play? I showed him a build from. I want to say like six months ago, like uh, over our winter break. So mm -hmm. it was things were still pretty rough, um, but I, I kind of walked him through it versus him playing. He's been asking me like every day when he when can he play, <laughs> um, and <laughs> I, I keep pointing him to the demo. Um, I haven't uh, heard <laughs> back from him yet. I'm like maybe you should just wait and get the full thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and my stepmom too keeps poking me. She's like, and she's never played a video game. She's like, when can I play your game? I'm like. I don't know if you're gonna have a good time with this. <laughs> <laughs> That's classic. Um, but yeah, I think uh, he wants to try the co-op as soon as it's up. I think I mentioned in that that other interview that he's uh, definitely more that mouse and keyboard player, mm. which uh, is good for now since we're we're Steam first, and then uh, even though it's it's totally pad friendly, but I think yeah. he'll be able to figure it out. Um, yeah, he's super excited for for the game, the team. Um, I've shown him like all the concept art along the way, and he's been a big cheerleader in the background. So that's been fun. That's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. I think we both had that same experience with with our moms. I think our moms are our biggest fans, uh, <laughs> and I often think I don't know what my mom's getting out of these videos, but she watches all of them. So good for, good for her. <laughs> um, See, awesome. my parents are Eastern European, so they're like when are you going to stop doing this indie game thing and go back to a real job? <laughs> we just made peace with the fact that you're a professional game developer when you were working for EA, which is a real company. <laughs> yes. I, yeah. I can relate. I've, um, I went to school for psychology and then kind of slowly transitioned to graphic design. And uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't for a while that my parents didn't uh, quite understand what graphic design was, let alone that, it, you know, I could make a career out of it. Um, and a couple of years back, I started working for an agency here in New York. And that's when they kind of were like, oh, wow, like that. OK, you're, you're doing something. That's great. <laughs> so but ironically, they're both my parents are super. They love the channel um, and ask me sometimes more about the channel than my real job, um, which is great. So <laughs> that's awesome. it's very funny. Um, cool. Well, as we close things out here, um, I kind of just wanted to end on maybe like a sort of broader question of like, what do you hope people take away from playing linked um when when it comes out well i hope they get those micro experiences that i had in world of warcraft and other games which is just a really good time with their friends like like laugh like get challenged hang mm -hmm. out have fun do something like that i i just really hope it's a a great pastime game for action players that's cool, yeah. I hope they fish and get all the fish. <laughs> but I'm a big collection person. I love watching our, our players kind of go through and be like, oh, you can collect fish. and But also the weapon collection. Like, we have a ton. The con the game is, for a team of 25 people, this is actually a pretty big game. Uh, and there's a lot to yeah. go in and unlock and collect. I'm sure you guys have seen it. I don't know if you've seen, like, everything in the game yet. No, um, yeah, yeah. We played the first. We played through the first chapter, and we already were like, man, there's a lot to this game. Yeah, so the early access is like the, f 
uh, four of our, I think, uh, what is it, nine chapters. Um, mm -hmm. But even within those four chapters and all the side content, like you will amass an armory of, of weaponry and upgrades and uh, spark powers and even um, summons and things like that. So there's so yeah. much to kind of get into and, and test out. Um, I'm super excited to see what players kind of come away from in terms of finding the most interesting builds, uh, both in terms of what works well in co-op, but even for single players, what's like the single player meta, uh, what's the co-op meta, um, what's super OP, and you know, for us, it's really, we're, we're hungry for this feedback so we can get in there and, and update the game and, and uh, just continually improve the experience. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, I just well, hope they save all the cute bots and then throw them into the water. <laughs> that's what I'll yes, be doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if Gabe is any indication, that's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so thank much, you. especially so close to launch. I'm sure that like this is probably the busiest time of the whole um, experience. So we really appreciate you guys taking the time to meet with us. Obviously, we love co-op games, but we don't get to talk to the people behind them very often. So this was such a cool experience for us. And um, I'm sure our audience will feel the same way. So thank you very much for for meeting with us and, uh, and uh, going through all these questions with us. And for our audience, if you enjoyed this, if this game sounds interesting, um, be sure to check them out on Steam. Uh, it is as of the time this will go up, it will be available in early access. Be sure to wishlist it too. Uh, that always helps out any developers. And uh, be sure to tune in for our impressions of the game. Um, like we said, we felt really good about our time with it. And we're definitely going to be following it throughout the early access journey that you guys will be going on. I'm sure we're going to cover it again at 1.0 like we usually do. So very excited to see how it evolves over time. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. And for our audience, we will catch you guys on another episode of The Co-op Rose.